Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In this video I want to share with you a new astrophotography accessory from SV Boini that should be a perfect tool for the upcoming galaxy season. In this box I have a new light pollution filter called SV260. In the video I'll give you some insights about the filter, my experience using it and of course some images that I captured over the last months. Now, I was sent this filter directly from SV Boini. They reached me out and asked to take a look at the filter, take some images and share my thoughts through the video. And as usual, I was not sponsored to make it. Speaking of this bag, there is another device from SV Boini that I received for the channel, but more on that later. Let's first take a look at the filter itself. The SV Boini SV260 is a multiband pass filter that helps to reduce light pollution in your images when capturing deep sky objects. There are different light pollution filters. Some are narrowband filters which block most of the visible light and focus only on specific emission lines. On the other hand, there are filters with wider band passes which block only a relatively small portion of visible light, just enough to improve details and contrast in deep sky objects. The SV260 falls into this second category. Let's quickly open it. Alright, so here is the packaging and let's open it. Nice! They also have this protection for the filter on both sides that you can take off before installation and I think that looks good. Uh, but before taking it off, let's quickly zoom the image in a bit and uh, look at the details what we have on the edges. So. Here we got SV Boini multi broadband pass filter. Yep, this is how it looks like. If we take a look at its transmission curve, we can see that SV260 is designed to reduce the transmission of wavelets associated with artificial light pollution, specifically from mercury and sodium vapor lights. At the same time, it still allows a significant amount of useful light to pass through making this filter a multiband pass option that is well suited for imaging galaxies, star clusters, reflection nebulae or any different broadband target that you can find on the night sky basically. I've been using this filter for a little over a month and let's take a look at some images that I captured. First, I want to begin with a direct comparison of single exposures, one taken without a filter and another with a SV260. And over here I got a picture of the Orion Nebula, right now you're looking at the picture taken without a filter and uh, I got a, like a kind of animation that shows a comparison of images taken with a 360 and without a filter. So what we can see is that the contrast of the image improves overall and uh, talking about these reddish structures on the Orion Nebula, the hydrogen regions, they also become much more prominent. Like as you can see here uh, on the Running Man Nebula, there is more red. Same idea is with the Orion Nebula itself. Uh, we see more details, more contrast in the dust over here compared to the image taken without a filter and also the vignetting improves uh, on the image. Uh, talking about vignetting, here I got quite more vignetting than usual on both of my images and that's to the fact that I was taking most of my images with a SV260 filter during the period of bright and almost like full moon in the sky. So yep, some of the images they also have a lot of pollution from the moon itself, however this filter still did a nice job improving the result. And the second image I want to show you here is the Mercurians chain, same idea with the vignetting, images were captured during a full moon and uh, that's why I have more vignetting than usual. However, talking about the galaxies themselves, you can see that a SV260 filter really helps to improve contrast on the image and galaxies, they appear more prominent compared to the image captured without the filter. And yet the key idea here I believe is that if we take images with the filter, then we can get much better result for the same amount of exposure time than we get uh, if taking images without using the filter. Now what about this SV Boini branded bag? Perhaps you already know this, but SV Boini also produces video and audio equipment and they sent me this video transmission system. Specifically, I got the ST1 model, which allows you to wirelessly transmit video from one source to another. So basically, I got my camera here and uh, as you can see, I have this HDMI cord running to a wireless transmitter from SV Boini. This is so actually weird <laughs> to look at SV Boini logo on non 
just a photography accessory. Here I got my screen and a receiver there once again I got a 4k video here running and uh, uh, yeah before I had the screen located on my camera like a few feet from me but now it's much closer. So this setup lets me monitor framing much better while also keeping an eye on camera settings and now it's all closer to me right here. Big thanks to SV Bonnie for this awesome gift. At first I was kind of surprised to see it since my channel is all about astrophotography and astronomy but as SV Bonnie sent they sent it to me to use on the channel and I'll be definitely using this device later in my future videos and I'm actually doing it right now. But now let's go back to the light pollution filter. Looking at the transmission curve it's easy to see that SV260 closely matches the transmission curve of the Aptalong L Pro filter which is one of its closest competitors. Luckily I already own an L Pro filter so I was able to capture images using both filters on the same night and let's take a look at this image comparison. And here on the screen we got two images of exactly the same area of the night sky. A galaxy on the left is M81 and the other one is M82 on both images. Now, image on the left captured using a Sweet 260 filter and the image on the right captured using Aptalong L Pro filter. Uh, these images, they like registered one to another and uh, at the first glance I think these images look exactly the same. Uh, what do you think, guys? Like, I think there is almost no difference visually between these images, but if we take a closer look, I think that images with Aptalong L Pro filter, they look a bit warmer compared to images taken with a SV260 filter. But once again, those are just like single exposures. And also I got these two images. Uh, these two are one hour total exposure time on both targets. So what I was doing is capturing five minute exposures with Aptalong L Pro filter, then I switched an hour later to a SV260 filter. So as we can see here, those how stacked images look like. Once again, if we zoom into the boat's galaxy, there is not a lot of difference actually. What I wanna do is I wanna quickly process these two images and uh, basically see if we find any difference on processed image. All right, so over here I basically got slightly stretched images of M81 and M82, both taken with L Pro and SV260 filter. And guys, I honestly don't know if there is any crucial difference between uh, these two filters. Overall, images look exactly the same, and as you can see on M82 Galaxy, like, uh, over, yeah, this image is just exactly the same, and there is no visible difference uh, between SV260 and uh, L Pro filter. And guys, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Talking about halos when taking images with SV260, I also want to show you the following. I'm currently in PixInsight processing my image of the Coma Cluster, and uh, this image has a total integration of, I think, somewhere around 17 hours of exposure time, and uh, we can see halo around these two stars that are brightest stars uh, in the frame. So I just looked in the Stellarium and this star has 7.15 magnitude and the other one over here is uh, 6.9. We we'll definitely can see halos around bright stars right over here and the other one over here. And if you're watching that on YouTube now, make sure that your resolution is set to the highest, otherwise the compression of YouTube might hide these halos. But yep, I think I actually see the, some halos like over here. It's not as noticeable on this star, but definitely we can spot it on these two stars. And uh, halos is something that you just might want to consider before getting the filter. However, I have Aptalong L Pro filter, and I also have the same problem with halos on my Aptalong filter. So yeah, SV260 has halos, and they're really noticeable when you take in long exposure images, like I'm talking about long integration. But this halos is not unique just to SV260, as for example, I already told you guys, I have Aptalong L Pro filter and have exactly the same issue with halos in my copy of Aptalong L Pro filter. But anyway, there is something that I want to share with you so that you're aware of it. Overall, I think SV260 performs exactly as intended. It cuts out light pollution, allowing for better results with the same exposure time compared to shooting without a filter. Talking about camera suitability, SV260 works well with any deep sky photography camera and even DSLR cameras. Just keep in mind that you'll probably need some adapters to use this filter with, as SVBony offers only a 2-inch version of the filter at the moment of filming this video. 
Now, one of the most important questions is whether you should buy this filter or not. And it all actually depends. So, for example, if you already own an L Pro filter, then I don't think there is a strong reason to switch as L Pro works exactly the same, like overall exactly the same as SV260. And as you saw yourself a few minutes ago, there is almost no difference in the images taken with either L Pro filter or SV260. However, if you're looking for your first light pollution filter or you just want another one, then SV260 could be a right choice for you since it sells for a lower price. In addition, I get a coupon for an even lower price for this filter in the description to the video. Feel free to use it while it's active. Alright guys, that was a quick review of the SV Boini SV260 light pollution filter. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and it gave you some good ideas of the results that you can achieve using it. For the upcoming Galaxy season, I'm planning to keep using this filter, hopefully with my 10-inch Schmidt Cassegrain telescope that I'm about to get up and running. So if you're interested in follow along, then please consider subscribing to my channel and stay tuned for my future videos. Now, if you enjoyed watching this video, then please consider giving it a like and also leave a supportive comment in the comment section down below. And of course, if you still have any questions about the filter, its performance or anything else that I can help you with regardless of the filter, then also consider leaving a comment in the comment section below. At the end of the video, I'm going to leave you guys with the set of images I captured using this V260 filter. Thank you guys so much for watching this video until very end. Really hope to see you at the next one. And until next time, clear skies guys.